I'm David Tillman, author of NootropicsExpert.com, and in this video I'm going to share with you what I know about cacao and dark chocolate as a nootropic, what it is, why we use it, the science behind it, dosage, and side effects. Cacao comes from the bean of the cacao tree, or the Theobroma cacao tree, a name derived from the Greek for food of the gods from theos, meaning God, and broma, meaning food. Native to Central and South America, cacao residue has been found in Olmec vessels found near Veracruz, Mexico, dating from 1750 BC. Aztec Emperor Montezuma loved cacao, calling it the divine drink, which builds up resistance and fights fatigue. A cup of this precious drink permits a man to walk for a whole day without food. Cacao beans were brought to Spain by the first European settlers in the 1500s. As a nootropic, cacao offers a host of brain benefits. It's a source of tryptophan, anandamide, phenylethylamine, theobromine, magnesium, caffeine, vitamins, minerals, flavonoids, and is a prebiotic. Cacao boosts cerebral blood flow, endorphins, learning, memory, focus, reduces free radical damage, suppresses cortisol, and reduces stress. In fact, chocolate consumption leads to better cognition. One study found that the countries with the highest chocolate consumption produced a greater number of Nobel laureates. But, not all chocolate is created equal, and here's why. Cacao and cocoa are not the same thing. They're both chocolate and start from the same place, but how they are processed make all the difference in their nootropic benefits. Chocolate in all forms start from the Theobroma cacao tree. Seed pods harvested from this tree are cracked open for the 30 to 40 cacao beans inside. The cacao beans are then placed in piles or bins, which are often seeded with microbial bacteria or cocobiota, and left to ferment for up to seven days. This fermentation process is uh, needed for developing the characteristic chocolate flavor. After fermentation, the cacao beans are dried, cleaned, and cocoa nibs removed from the shell. All cacao is roasted at varying degrees to enhance that distinct chocolate flavor and to kill pathogens and bacteria. There is no such thing as raw cacao or raw cocoa, no matter what the marketer tries to sell you. Anything heated above 104 degrees Fahrenheit begins to lose its nutritional value. But the cacao fermentation process itself can heat up to 120 degrees. The key is cocoa roasted at the lowest heat possible but still maintaining most of the or cacao's nutritional value. Dutch press cocoa or uh, dark, dark cocoa is a cacao powder that has been processed using an alkalizing agent or potassium carbonate to give it a darker color and milder taste. This is the form of cocoa often used in ice cream, hot cocoa, baking, and chocolate bars. Research has shown that natural cacao powder, which is minimally processed, contains the highest total antioxidant capacity, or TAC, TAC. Milk chocolate contains the least amount of cocoa solid and has the lowest TAC and procyanidin levels. The alkalization process used in Dutch processed cocoa also has far less procyanidin content. Shells are removed from the cacao nibs used to, using a winnowing machine. Some of the nibs are packaged and sold as is. Since cacao nibs come directly from the cacao tree, they contain the highest level of flavanols and provide the most nootropic benefit. But most cacao nibs, nibs are ground into a chocolate liqueur, which is then processed into chocolate by mixing in cacao butter, sugar, and other flavoring and emulsifiers. Now, one study surveyed a broad range of chocolate and cacao-containing products marketed across the United States. The study included three or four of the top-selling products within these categories. Natural cocoa powder, unsweetened baking chocolate, dark chocolate, semi-sweet baking nibs, milk chocolate, and chocolate syrup. Now, researchers tested for percent fat, percent non-fat cocoa solid, an antioxidant level by ORAC, total polyphenols, epicatechin, catechin, total monomers, and flavin-3-oligolomers and polymers. 
which are procyanidins. The study found a five-fold variation on epicatechin and catechins between products in decreasing order, cocoa powder, baking chocolate, dark chocolate and baking chips, milk chocolate, and chocolate syrup, which means that cacao powder provides the most nootropic benefit in chocolate syrup the least. Well, first, cacao improves mood. Cacao stimulates the release of endorphins in your brain. It contains tyrosine, which is a precursor to dopamine, and tryptophan, which is a precursor to serotonin, all neurotransmitters contributing to mood. Researchers at the Neuroscience Institute in San Diego found that chocolate blocks the breakdown of anandamide, which helps increase happiness levels. And Dr. David Lewis of the Mind Lab, which is funded by Cadbury, found that chocolate provides a bliss that in many cases lasted four times as long as the most passionate kiss. In the second way, cacao boosts memory. The flaminols in cacao cross the blood-brain barrier and accumulate in the hippocampus. This is an area of the brain involved in learning and memory. Scientists believe flavanols directly interact with cellular cascades yielding expression of the proteins that promote neurogenesis, neuronal function, and brain connectivity. And flavanols improve cerebral blood flow in the creation of new blood vessels, which provide long-term protective effects in cognition and behavior. Cacao contains caffeine, which in low doses improves memory and mood and concentration. A University of Oslo team conducted a cross-sectional study with 2,441 people to examine the correlation between the intake of flavonoids from chocolate, wine, and tea and cognitive performance. The researchers found that the subjects who consumed more chocolate, wine, and tea, all three, had higher cognitive test scores than those who did not. The scientists concluded that the intake of these foods in cognition was dose-dependent with the maximum effect for chocolate and wine. The study authors said a diet high in some flavonoid-rich foods is associated with better performance in several cognitive abilities in a dose-dependent manner. They also pointed out that dark chocolate contains a greater amount of flavonoids per serving than tea and red wine, which increases blood flow to gray matter in the brain, reducing the risk of dementia and stroke. Most of us love chocolate because it tastes great, and we love the way it makes us feel. And minimally processed chocolate, 80% cacao or above, like this one, is one of the best nootropics that anyone can easily find. Cacao is a source of tryptophan, the precursor to the neurotransmitter serotonin, which puts us in a good mood. Cacao stimulates the release of phenylethylamine, or PEA, which in turn releases norepinephrine and dopamine producing the euphoric effect often associated with the runner's high. Cacao boosts the release of anandamide, which is also known as the bliss molecule. Flavanol-rich cacao improves blood flow to the brain, which boosts oxygen and nutrient delivery to brain cells, resulting in better memory and processing speed. And cacao contains more antioxidants than any other superfoods, including acai, blueberries, tea, and pomegranate. Cacao helps relieve stress by suppressing the release of cortisol and providing a substantial amount of magnesium which improves memory, focus, mood, and sleep. Dark, dark chocolate reduces our craving for sweet, salty, and fatty food. And chocolate loves bifidobacterium which makes it a great prebiotic. Research has found that seniors who ate more dark chocolate were less likely to develop dementia. Tripping on chocolate. People actually snort raw cacao and report a smooth, invigorating, easygoing kind of high. A rush of well-being floated over my body. Now, I can't say that I've tried it, but then again, the seeds of the cacao tree were originally considered to have divine properties. Food of the gods ring a bell? Minimally processed cacao releases a potent amount of endorphins, which can give you the euphoric feeling especially when enjoying some EDM. 
Cacao also contains phenylethylamine, or PEA, which leads to tyrosine, which leads to dopamine, fueling your brain's pleasure and reward system. The magnesium in cacao relaxes you, and the epicatechin in cacao boosts blood flow, which means that you can go faster and further. More oxygen to muscles allows you to make the most of whatever it is that you love to do. Sober has never been more fun. People are even do doing cacao in clubs. And you can party until dawn with no hangover and no regrets. Even if you're not willing to try snorting some cacao, minimally processed cacao, sometimes called raw cocoa or raw cacao, will improve your mood. Cacao stimulates the release of anandamide, serotonin, and phenylethylamine, all neurotransmitters that boost your mood. It's easy to get excited about the health benefits of chocolate. Now, we often see headlines about the latest chocolate discovery, but here's the thing. The studies investigating the links between chocolate and great health are not using the type of chocolate that you find in the checkout line at the supermarket. Easy lo easily lost in translation, or a sneaky attempt to sell more magazines. But these scientists are using cacao that are not highly processed chocolate. Minimally processed cacao still tastes great, so keep in mind that you won't get the nootropic benefits you'd expect from cacao with a box of Godiva chocolates. Now I've got a ton more research on cacao and dark chocolate over on Nootropics Expert. I've got one on how cacao improves learning and memory, and I've got a clinical study, another clinical study on how cacao improves mood, I've got another clinical study on how cacao prevents dementia. So if you want to see details on these clinical studies, please click on the link below this video and go directly to the transcript for this video over on Nootropics Expert. Recommended dosage for cacao flavanols for cognitive benefit is 500 to 1000 milligrams per day. Now the challenge is figuring out flavanol levels in cacao or the, or the dark chocolate that you're buying. A few manufacturers declare flavanol amounts in milligrams per capsule or dose in the ingredients label. Cacao nibs and cacao powder are the purest and contain the highest levels of flavanols, but pure cacao tends to be bitter. So, look for capsules if you can't stand the taste of dark chocolate or cacao. Milk negates the advantage of eating chocolate because it interferes with the absorption of the antioxidants in chocolate. This includes no health benefit from eating milk chocolate. Cacao and dark chocolate may cause acne, heartburn, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. The phenylethylamine in chocolate may cause migraines in some people. Weight gain is a concern when consuming solid dark chocolate regularly. Cacao is a stimulant, so avoid taking it later in the day if you don't want it to interfere with sleep. And some drugs may increase the effects of caffeine present in cacao because they decrease the metabolism and clearance of caffeine, including drugs, well I've got a list of them over on Nootropics Expert, they include some oral contraceptives um, and some antibiotics. Cacao may increase the, the uh, adverse reaction when used with clozapine because it inhibits this drug's metabolism. 1.5 ounces or more of raw cacao with MAOIs, or monoamine oxidase inhibitors, or other antidepressant meds may cause a hypertensive crisis or lead to uh, serotonin syndrome. The oxalic acid in cacao inhibits absorption of calcium in your body. So larger amounts of cacao could cause problems for those with kidney stones or other calcium absorption issues. Now here's a big note. Dogs, parrots, and horses should not eat cacao or chocolate because they lack the necessary enzymes to metabolize theobromine in, cho in cacao. Chocolate or cacao can kill your pet. Cats have about half the sens sensitivity cacao to cacao, but it can also be deadly for cats. Less processed cacao means more of the nootrophic benefits of flavanols. 
And the converse is true. The more cacao is processed, the less cognitive benefit you experience. So a good rule of thumb, darker chocolate is better. 85% cacao is, is better. The darker, the better. Milk chocolate and white chocolate does not meet these requirements and provides no nootropic benefit. You can use pure cacao powder found in the baking section of your local supermarket. If you can't stand the taste, then you can get a capsule machine and make capsules. Avoid Dutch processed chocolate because most of the goodness found in the cacao is processed out. The chocolate maker Mars Inc. has developed a process called Coco Pro, which extracts cacao flavanols from fresh cacao beans, preserving them in the highest concentrations available. So search for a cacao extract in capsules using uh, Coco Pro in their product to be sure you know exactly how many flavanols are in each capsule. The U.S. Department of Agriculture database of flavonoid content report that unsweetened baking chocolate has 206 milligrams of flavanols per 100 grams of chocolate and dark chocolate has half that amount. So, my Nootropics expert recommendation for cacao flavanols is 500 to 1000 milligrams per day. And that's my report on cacao. If you want to see links to the studies I talked about, go to Nootropics expert and search for cacao or chocolate or click on the link below this video. There you'll find a full transcript of this video and you'll find dozens of articles and all the well-known nootropics on Nootropics Expert. If you have any questions or you want to share your experience using cacao, use the uh, comment section over in the bottom of the post on Nootropics Expert. I respond to comments and questions over on Nootropics Expert usually the same day. And if you want to see more videos on all the best nootropics used today, subscribe to this channel before you leave. I'll be putting up new videos on nootropics and optimizing your brain every week. I'm David Toman, author of Nootropics Expert.